Let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk a little bit more directly about ABM. So historically, when I've ever had a conversation with a company that uh, claims they're running an ABM strategy, what they really mean is I've created a list in sales now of a couple hundred, maybe accounts or a thousand accounts. Um, and then for each one of those, we've found a handful of people um, or stakeholders that we want to go after. And at that point in time, we just spam them with cold email from our BDR SDR team and hit them with a ton of display ads. We upload this into LinkedIn or tool of choice with targeting and then uh, pump these companies um, with ads. And then maybe they'll add, be a little bit, uh, uh, they'll think a little bit about retargeting and maybe de-anonymize people on their website, think a little bit about intent, um, but really not really act on that. In your mind, uh, what is an actual good ABM program and why do most ABM programs look like this? Yeah. Uh, so for starters, when we think about how to structure an ABM program, what a good ABM program looks like, generally speaking, there are four key components of an ABM program. Um, so we think about data. So who we're going after and additionally past data, because a lot of these sales nav tools uh, or sorry, sales nav or people that are using data enrichment platforms, they're focused on the firmographics. So like, what's the revenue amount? What are the number of employees? What's the right industry? So they're thinking technically from a data perspective, but the piece that they're missing from a data perspective is like, what's our trigger? Like, what? why are we reaching out to any of these people? What is the reason to reach out? Um, I think about that a lot uh, as I look at working with sales teams, because again, if you can pass an account and say, we're, we're passing this account over for these very tangible reasons, and it's not, they hit a specific lead score or an account score. It's these are the actual reasons. Like they hit our product page, our pricing page, and our schedule call page, and they didn't book a call. You should probably reach out. Like, of course, the seller is going to activate on that. So, data trigger, and then the other component is uh, based on that data set. How should that inform our content? So again, who are we going after? And based on that filtering criteria, how do we speak directly to that audience? Those are the first three things as we think about data. I don't think even most of those pe most people are not even thinking past the first one, which is like, who are we going after? And again, they go with the biggest, broadest list they can and call it account-based marketing. So that's the first piece. Second piece is distribution. So this is largely what you referenced earlier of like, could be display ads, could be cold outbound email. But again, like really map out what are the distribution channels that we have to get access to this audience? And if we really break it down to more of a first principle thinking, it's just how do we get in front of these people? Some of my best ABM programs were community plays. Of I figured out where my accounts were hanging out from an online community perspective. I just hung out in those communities and I answered their questions and I was present and I was active. And as a result, I distributed my information in those communities in a way in which they received the information appropriately. So it's a breaking it down of how do we distribute information to this data source? Third, uh, destination. What are we pointing people to? Is it a case study? Is it a piece of blog content? It is a podcast. Is it a webinar series? Is it a dedicated offer page? Like there's a thousand different things you can point people to, but you've got to point people somewhere so that they can actually engage with your brand. So what's the destination? And then lastly, direction. How are we tracking if they are coming closer to becoming in our account or further away? A lot of people will hear me as I say that and say like, oh, form fills, we're doing lead gen. Not necessarily. Like, Again, if you have a designated landing page that you only promote through one designated channel to one designated audience, and you see traffic on that page, and you can de-anonymize your account level traffic with a tool called Warmly for free, if these accounts have never shown up on your website, and then you see these accounts that are only, again, it's only distributed through like one or two channels because it's a part of this campaign, and you see those accounts showing up on that landing page, you are tracking. These people are engaging, and they have a higher level of engagement than those that did not hit this page. That is direction. You can also look at like an individual HubSpot CTA. You can create a designated single CTA that's put on a single page and you can actually see the number of clicks on that CTA. And that has a directional tracking metric. So again, those are some things that you can think through. And once you've understood and answered those four questions, again, data, who we're going after, distribution, what are the channels that we're using? Destination, what are we pointing people to? Direction, how are we tracking it? You answer those four questions, in a way that is logical, <laughs> you can actually build any kind of an ABM program. I think the reason that most ABM programs look like they do today 
is because admittedly when ABM platforms came on the scene, they were really, really over glamorized account based advertising platforms. So that's where most people think ABM is, is just like, we can advertise to our accounts wherever they are. And like, we can follow them all over the internet. And like, it was a tactic that became viewed as the strategy. So that's why I think it exists that way today. ABM platforms in a lot of ways have matured, uh, but I still think that ABM is still largely dictated by tech vendors. It's the only strategy that I've still heard to this day. Somebody say, I want to buy ABM. I still have people come inbound to me and they're like, we're excited to buy a tech platform that will enable us to do ABM. Like I'm a vendor in like a services space. I'm an agency. I'm not a, I'm, they're like, wait, you mean ABM has service? Like there's a, you're an ABM agency. That's a thing. You don't have that with inbound. You don't have to have that with content. So again, that's why I think ABM programs are still built the way that they are. And hopefully a better way forward is that 4D framework that we just walked through.